Vice to lay off hundreds and stop publishing on its website. That's it. <laughs> Ding dong, the witch is dead. It's, it's, it, it really is sad. It, it's personal. I could have saved Vice. I absolutely could have. Um, everything that I'm doing right now, I pitched to Vice in some form 10 years ago. And they went, I don't know, you know, maybe whatever. And they never did it. And then after I left Fusion 2016, I said, I'm going to do exactly what I know works. And I did. And uh, we're doing really well. A bunch of different companies, a bunch of different brands. We have our own coffee company. We've got a physical location. Things are going pretty well. Vice. Vice Media CEO Bruce Dixon on Thursday said the company planned to lay off several hundred positions amid fundamental changes to its strategic vision. They said that uh, Vice.com will no longer publish. That's it. That's, that's it. Nice. You know, the end of an era. What happened to Vice? Get well, go broke. So who's next? Well, uh, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, let me see if I have the. Uh, it is a good question it. though, because Vice did serve a specific kind of content and it did have a, a pretty intense following for a while. So yeah. who kind of took over their niche? I yes. Mean, who is today's current, current Vice? Well, let's see. Post Millennial says this, already in 2024, almost every major news publisher has cut jobs or completely closed its doors, including over 500 journalists. You've got The Washington Post, Vox Media, LA Times, Pitchfork, Sports Illustrated, Time, Business Insider, TechCrunch, wow, Wall dude. Street Journal, Messenger, Vice Media. I didn't know it was that pervasive. Dude, companies are going to be one dude with a headset that's writing like 6,000 articles at once in his in his house with no overhead cost. No, it's going to be AI. But what's... That's what I'm saying. He's going to use AI to write these things. He'll be commanding AI to do all this stuff. And then all, so unless you get out of it now and start doing something that can't be terminated, those jobs you're, will be terminated. So if you're working yeah. for companies like this, they're going to automate you out. Um, maybe not everybody, but that's going to happen, dude. You're going to have like a Protoss if you know Star, Star, uh, um, StarCraft. It's like one it's, dude in a battle cruiser commanding the entire battle cruiser with his mind. What I told Vice 11 years ago was, or it's like 10 years and seven months. You need to prioritize the personalities that you have. Otherwise, you're done. And Vice said, no, we need to prioritize the brand. Nope. Mm -hmm. you're, you were right. I was right. It was Hamilton Morris. It was people like Hamilton's Pharmacopia. Is that right? Ha yes, yep. right. Uh, okay. Hamilton. Yep. Um, that was the stuff that made Vice great. It was the people. Yeah. It was the personalities. And, and Vice wanted to build up a brand that was worth massive amounts of money. So Vice always needed the attention. And they didn't want any personality to get too much attention and then become a diva or leave. So they always made sure that anything that happened, it was the brand. It was Vice and only Vice. And I said... That's going to work for a little bit, and then it will stop working. You need it to be the parent brand, but it's simple. You have 10 personalities everybody likes. Have them run their own channels, and their big documentaries, their big premieres, those are on the Vice channel. Each and every one of these accounts will have the Vice logo, the Vice branding on all of their accounts, and you multiply your viewership times 10, and they were like, nah. Yeah, and if people have their own channels, they'll work harder to empower their channels, even if Vice owns the channel because it's theirs. I mean, it would technically be Vice's at that time. What I was but you can do at, deals where the people co-own their channels or totally own their channels, too. I was looking at Vice. what was going on with YouTube, mm -hmm. how YouTube was, was, was growing, how networks were struggling to capture the social audience. And I said, you know this. A single brand channel doesn't work. You have one channel. And uh, here's how I always explain it to people. You make a channel called Donald Trump Does Backflips. Guess who's going to subscribe to that channel? People who want to see Donald Trump do a backflip. I'd love to see that, right? And so they subscribe and you post a video of Trump doing a backflip. The next day, it's Trump doing another backflip. The next day, guys, not a backflip, a gainer. Even better. You know what a gainer is? No. So you do a backflip, but you're running forward, okay. basically. Now you've got a bunch of subscribers who are like, I love this channel. And then one day you post Hillary Clinton doing a front flip. Well, uh oh, they were like, I don't care about Hillary Clinton. I don't care about front flips. So they don't watch the video. What happens now? A certain percentage of your audience doesn't watch a certain percentage of your content. And YouTube says bad content, bad channel starts deranking it. Less and less people get suggested the content. And then you make a video. Someone subscribed, but they only watch once per month. And YouTube's algorithm says clearly people don't like this content. So what I told them was when you do smaller clips and videos, have that be on a channel you own, but for the personality in the host. When they do a documentary, you put that on the main channel because people like the Vice documentaries. And they went, I don't know about that. If they did that, 
they would still exist. But more importantly, if they did not get woke, they would still exist. Vice.com, Vice.com and Vice Media got big. Why? Because they were doing wacky and wild stuff. They were going to sex shops. They're the biggest button Brazil, scopolamine, bulletproof clothing, wild adventures. And then they decided, let's do diverse and inclusive feminist stories. <laughs> and then they burned to the ground. That was it. End of an era, man. I, I know Vice has died now, I think, four times. So I was almost just like, <laughs> doing, well, like, I, rem I remember when Disney wrote off their investment from like half a billion dollars to zero. They were like, Vice is worthless. It's a worthless company. Now uh, they've been bankrupt, then they sold, and now they're just laying everybody off. And apparently they're going to be like a back-end production company. Hmm. I would love to buy the domain, wow. have vice.com redirect to SCNR or something. <laughs> That'd be great. If the brand truly goes defunct, I would love to buy it. Do you think they would sell it to you? Well, it's interesting because whether or not, I'll say, I'll say yes, but the issue is vice.com as a four letter URL is just valuable in and of itself. Yeah. And there's a lot of a lot of brands that would like to use the word vice. Right. So would they sell it to me? I don't know if I could afford it. You, you're going to get a big company that's going to be like, oh, Vice Media is defunct. We'll give you $10 million for that domain. You know what I mean? So it, it is what it is. But if uh, we'll see, I mean, if their brand ever goes defunct, I'm sitting there ready to pounce. I will, I will seize that IP the moment they give it up. I got the, the you know, independent trucks. No, it's right behind me. It's right here. Uh-oh, that one's falling. This is the uh, Tim Cascade Company. See that logo? Mm -hmm. You know what that logo is? What this? is that logo? Well, there was a company called Independent Trucks, and that was their logo for 50 years. It's one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic image in skateboarding. And they abandoned it because they thought it was racist. They said it too looks too much like a German Iron Cross or something. So Which they stopped one? using it. It kind of did look like one. It looks more like a Maltese cross, to be honest. Yeah. But the Iron Cross is also not Nazi. Yeah. The yeah. Iron Cross is used <laughs> by a bunch, of different, a bunch of different countries use yeah. the Iron yeah. Cross. <laughs> and, so uh, and so they abandoned it. And so the moment they removed it from their products and, disasso and dissociated themselves from it, I uh, took it and I have it on uh, my skateboards now. It's funny because so, Iron yeah. Cross kind of looks like my name. Ian Cross Land. Kind of. It does. It looks more like a Maltese cross. Yeah. Either way, it's mine. It's got and the, the rounded edges make it look and, different. And, and, and you know, I've given some of these boards out and we use them for marketing and I've not gotten anything from independent about it. So I believe now at this point with the amount of shows we've done where we've mentioned it, probably 15 million unique individuals have seen my declaration of this. Mm -hmm. And it's been, how long has it been? Like a year and a half? About a year. About a year. I mean... I would love it if Independent came and said, no, 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 we still use that logo, but they don't. Yeah. And I think after a year and numerous shows where I've said, it's, it's, we're using it, it's mine, and they've not responded in any way, I think it's mine. Yeah. And so if anyone else uses it, I will sue them. Nice. It's mine now. <laughs> yeah, we should have like so that, watch that, out, that classic uh, Independent sh uh, logo shirt like this. Would you say Tim Cast underneath it? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think what we'll do is, for the boonies, is we'll start uh, producing boards with that logo on it. Hell yeah. Well... I mean, I, I, I got, like at this point, we've produced boards, we've promoted them, we've given some out, and they've not said anything. Yeah. But if they come out and they say, hey, that's our logo, you can't use it, I will say, sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. I will now publish that to my audience of millions of people <laughs> yeah. so that everyone knows that's your logo. No, but they were scared that they looked like yeah. racist, so they issued a statement saying, oh, we're not racist, we're not racist. Well, you know, it is what it's it crazy is. crazy what a business motivation it is to be like, but we're not racist, like the Dixie Chicks becoming the Chicks to be like, yeah. oh, right, well, we're right, not right. associated with that. Wait, wait, like, remember when Lady Antebellum changed their, their band Lady name? A. But Lady A was already a black singer. And so she accused them of stealing her, her <laughs> artist name and they're racist. So what are they now? I think they're still Lady A. Oh, okay. So then it was okay. <laughs> it's so stupid. Who cares if you're stupid, calling right? yourself Antebellum? It means nothing. That's, that's, it, just, it means before the war. It's yeah, like it pre-Civil War. But they were like, well, association with the Confederacy in the South, we can't do that. that Who cares? I mean, that's really an interesting business tactic. Like, you could scare a lot of companies into doing all kinds of stuff if you convince them what they're currently doing is <laughs> yeah. racist. No, this is oh, the, why, why people can't catch a break. <laughs> no, you, you know the crazy thing is, y'all can, can't do shit. <laughs> you, know, you guys know that the Aunt Jemima, the, the new Pearl Milling Company yeah. bottles still have Aunt Jemima on them. Wow. Where? Pearl Milling Company oh. boxes and bottles have Aunt Jemima in the bottom corner saying, Previously, Aunt Jemima, same great taste or whatever. And so I'm just like, so you, you, I, don't, I don't understand what you're doing. 
The logo is still on the bottle, just in a different, less prominent position. Maybe sooner or later. Well, the logo is not really. It no, it's just the name. They got it in small print, just the name, but they, they don't have her face at the bottom, though. So okay. they just deleted her. That seems really yeah. rude to me. They don't yeah. have her. Yeah, they don't but have her face. If that something was like, like major, egregiously it? offensive, you would not want the memory of it on your bottle. Right. Right. That's why it feels like a razor because they're just getting rid of it. Like with Uncle Ben's mm-hmm. they just got rid of it completely. It's like, why would you, you just completely Well, the Land of Lakes girl, right? Yeah, she's just well. gone. Yeah, and, that, and she's like a super disenfranchised. Like Native Americans in this country are a super disenfranchised and are a small population. We're you think they want them. it. Uh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. It's just the name has formerly Aunt Jemima. Formerly, wow. yeah. Formerly. Wow, that's yeah. just crazy. in case you didn't know. Yeah. But I guess formerly Aunt Jemima. You know, and, and, and you know, because I just. But it doesn't make sense, it's though. It's so it, unappealing. If you don't like the name, if, if y'all, y'all thought the name was racist, if if her whole character yeah. was supposedly, if this woman was racist, I mean, if the whole Unjamama brand was racist, why even have formerly known as yeah. on there? Formerly racist. That's yeah, right, right, right. Formerly right. racist. <laughs> no we longer racist. racist. This is formerly racist. <laughs> um. Still racist. Still racist. <laughs> Would you think Aunt Jemima was racist? She probably was. I'm just <laughs> no, not, not the woman herself. But no. like, was it racist to use that imagery? No. That's what people think. She's just a woman that made and, pancakes. And, and they're wrong. Yeah. Because they say this woman, they say all, you know, they say, well, uh, uh, she started making pancakes for for white slave owners or people who were racist. And she cooked for racist people. And that, you know, white people, they love the idea of a black person cooking for them. You know, it reminds wow. them of like a, a house slave. I got an idea. I love the idea of a yeah. good cook Yo, cooking for me. How exactly. We put illegal immigrants on products. <laughs> and I ask them think it's racist. But we don't know yeah. any of their names because we can't pa- register Paco's them. Paco's Pancakes. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. Paco's Tacos? There's got to be Paco's Tacos Paco, already exist. Paco's Pancakes. That was my right, name guys, in Spanish class. We got, Paco. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.